Hello everyone, welcome back to GK Code Lab. So if you know, I have posted a video two days back. If you have not seen that video, please watch this in I button. It was regarding some people wanted to work on actual big data day to day use cases. So till now I have got multiple requests, multiple mails and WhatsApp messages. And it's good to hear that many people are interested in this. Now this video is to explain how we'll be taking this through. So as I told in my previous video, the extended plan members will be getting access to my GitHub repository, which I have specifically created for this project where we'll be uh, collaborating and we'll be providing our uh, code. And also just to give it a touch of the actual big data project, we'll also be following some standard practices that are being followed in uh, the actual big data projects, very important of which is agile. So all of you who already know what is agile, it's good. If you are not aware, just see a few references online so that you get the background of what is agile. I'm not going into deep because this would take the actual topic off. So in actual projects for agile, mostly the very important tool that is used is Jira, where the project and tasks are distributed into different scrum teams. And on a very higher level, uh, this is handled into sprints. So we'll be also taking similar approach so that um, it will be better to manage the project first of all and also for you to understand and have a feel of some real-time projects. So for this collaboration project, I'll not be using Jira, but I'll be using similar other uh, tool from Atlassian itself, that is Trello. We'll be using this for two reasons. First of all, this is simple. And if you are new to Agile, Jira in the first glance might be a little uh, confusing for you. On the other hand, Trello is very easy to use and with some limitations, we can implement the software development in Agile methodology. So first of all, from my extended plan members, if you are interested, I'll be requiring two things from you. That is your GitHub details, GitHub account details or email. And second, if you already have or not, if not, you can create one Trello account. That is absolutely free. You can create one and provide me the details. Anyhow, for non extended plan subscribers as well, I'll be keep sharing the Trello details and what all tasks I'm adding, I'll be sharing in the form of videos on my YouTube channel. So you'll be always aware of that. You can implement on your end. And for the purpose of sharing your code, the extended plan members get the access to GitHub repository. The instructions of how to maintain this GitHub repository, I'll cover it right now. Although once you clone that repository, all important details will be available to you in readme.md file. So let's straight away go ahead and see what all we have, how to start, so that you can plan your day to day work. I'm sure uh, many of you will be already working. And still, if you are interested in this practice, you can plan your day out what time or how much time you will be giving to this. There is surely no time foundation. That's all up to your interest. What all tasks you want to pick and you can take as much time as you want. Once again, all the extended plan members, please share me your GitHub details, GitHub account details and your Trello account details that will enable you to view all the tasks. So let's jump to my computer screen and see all this, whatever I was talking about. So this is the Git repository, which I have created for this practice. I'll be sharing the link of this Git repo to all the extended plan members and make sure all of you share with me the GitHub username so that I can give you the access for this as well. For non subscribers, I'll be going through the project structure as well. Don't worry. You can make the same structure in your local. So this repo has two branches. There is one master and a dev branch. So our merging strategy would be right now the dev branch is the exact replica of the master. So we'll be taking our dev branch as the base branch where we'll be starting our work. All the instructions are already there in readme.md. In case you have any confusion, just let me know. So you can clone this repository. The link I'll provide in the description as well as to you one to one as well. So once you clone this repo, I'm showing this in IntelliJ, but uh, it's up to you. If you want, you can do that in your preferred IDE. I would recommend IntelliJ. So once you clone this, the readme.md file will be automatically opened for you. This is the introduction of any GitHub repository. The project name and some details uh, for getting started. All the instructions are right here. Some known issues for that in case you face what you have to do. All those things I have already mentioned. Only few prerequisites for this. JDK should be installed and your Java home should be set in your environment variables in case you are using Windows or your profile paths. 
in case you are using Linux or Mac or any uh, other operating system. You should be having IntelliJ installed or any particular IDE and you should have the internet connectivity obviously for in case uh, you mention any external dependencies you should have the internet connectivity. So this is the small intro for the git repo. Now let me go through this uh, as well. So inside your project you'll be having the source folder inside the source folder main and test and inside main you'll be having a resources directory in Scala I have already created a sample package for you but I believe uh, you might not be seeing this exact structure here because github uh, might not reflect these packages in case the package or directories are empty so you can create the package same way after cloning the repository same things are inside test your resources and the package the base package in git ignore I have already included dot idea because there are a lot of unnecessary file unnecessary regarding the project code so that might not be needed to push to git so this will not be included so once you clone this repo just create this uh, package structure and we are good to go now coming to how we'll be managing the development so as I told I'll be using Trello for this so I have already created a Trello account and inside that I have created a project GK collab project so this is the home for Trello. The registration process is very simple. You just have to provide few necessary email and password details and there will be one account created for you. Now Trello is a very simple tool with which you can implement agile methodology and it is very easy to use where the software development work can be easily managed within a team. So I have already created a team GK extended subscribers. I'll be adding all the members here as soon as I get the Trello ID. So right now there are no members. As soon as I get the IDs, I'll keep adding here. And once I add your ID and invite you, then if you log into your Trello account and go to your home, you'll be able to see GK Collab Project 1. It's as simple as that. Now, once you are able to see this project, you can click on this. And this is how your Trello board looks like. So these are the lists that, that I have created. First one is just for reference for a uh, few details, important details like uh, GitHub details that I have already mentioned here. You can click, you can see the description, the GitHub repository and the instructions for this. So this is very important how you have to go ahead with this. First you have to clone the above repository. Then you have to create a feature branch out of dev branch. So as I told you, we are in the dev branch here. So once you clone this, you can create a new branch and here you can give your branch name. What branch name you have to give that is feature slash feature slash then your name hyphen task ID so task ID even if uh, I update you can note from there otherwise you can uh, mention the task name so something like this feature slash if I have to go arpit hyphen task one something like this and you can check out the branch so this will be created out of your dev this is how you have to create your feature branch. Now you can see I am in feature slash Arpit task code. Okay, I hope that is clear. Now whatever changes you make that will be only in your feature branch that will not mess up with the dev or the master branch. I hope that is clear. Then you can start working on your task. So these are the GitHub details. So first list all the reference details I'll be keep updating. Then comes your product backlog. So first let us discuss how we'll be managing the sprint. So there will be one product backlog again this backlog all these keywords these are related to agile I'm not going into deep a lot of content is available online you can see what is a backlog in sprint what is sprint first of all and what is product backlog sprint backlog all this you can see basically just an overview whatever we have uh, the work to be done uh, considering any particular product or uh, software that we are building that can be considered as a product backlog. Now we'll be doing all this work. I, right now I have uh, mentioned few of them. I'll be keep adding the cards. And once you have the access to this board, you will be getting all the updates. Like what card is added, who is working on what, how much that is done. And in case you are working, you are you will be able to update everything. So in actual project, this kind of things are uh, being done uh, using Jira as well. And that is the interface of which is uh, slightly complex. But along with that, it is much more productive as well. 
so we'll stick to trello and implementing the same things now we'll be doing all this in form of sprints so we'll be taking usually sprint lasts for uh, two or three weeks so sprint is nothing but uh, all the members who are contributing to any project they are assigned a set of tasks which uh, already a scrum master can uh, plan that what all we'll be taking in this week sprint and accordingly we can uh, move the tasks so let's say once our sprint begins i'll i can move few tasks to sprint backlog so this is the product backlog that means uh, this is all we have to do for this uh, product to be built or whatever um, set of things are given to us and whatever we are taking up in this sprint will be moving to the sprint backlog list let me move them back as of now then comes in progress so let's say uh, 10 members are working for this or contributing to this we'll be assigning each and every task to their account once they are added in the team and from whatever are in the sprint backlog for that sprint those members who that is assigned to can move their cards to in progress so that everyone is updated that okay this guy is working on this but let's suppose for this uh, we'll not be able to handle each and everything as it is done in actual project because in actual project you have to work 9 to 5 or 9 to 8 whatever so everything is done on the time uh, so for this this is just for our practice so i would suggest who all are uh, the member of this board you can refer to everything just don't move any card because maybe this task uh, you'll be also doing and some other guy will also be doing so you can take all the details i'll discuss each one of them you can take all the details and in each there is an option to update or write comment so you can keep updating your comments just mo don't move these cards i'll see once uh, i see that uh, this particular task is done by one of you or multiple people uh, among you i'll uh, consider that completed and i'll keep moving that so that is how we'll go for this so as the name suggests in progress and then review in case you write the code complete your code and uh, you wish for us to review we'll see a time we can get on a call or i can update the comments from my side as well so you can develop and you can keep your card here or you can update the comment that it is done and once that particular piece is developed we can move this to closed so i hope that is clear the flow is clear now let's see whatever task uh, very basic task i have created so how you can go through this and how you can start developing this so first is very basic create the project structure if you click on this i have also marked the labels that uh, in case anything is uh, not ready or good to go so um, you can see here good to go and this is important as well so create the project and package structure in preferred ide so as i told uh, the package is empty right now so it might not be reflecting in your github so you can create your base package and some extra dependencies as this is the Scala SBT project. So to build the application, it is important for you to add the SBT assembly dependency. So you can create one assembly.sbt as I have created here. Inside your project, you can create one assembly.sbt and add this dependency. Once you add this, there will be an option to import it. You can import it will take some time as per your internet connectivity and it will download it so that's all and here is the checklist after each and every task you do as soon as you keep updating these tasks you can tick here again if this is done by multiple people you can update here that you have done it and it will come against your id that you have done all these tasks as soon as you keep updating this the percentage will start growing once uh, most uh, most of you do this i'll mark all this checked okay so create the structure in main because you have to create this package and then in test as well and then you have to add spark core and spark sql dependency and as the add the sbt dependency so pretty basic stuff okay then the second task create the main object so we are taking this uh, like however uh, we build the application from very scratch in the actual project so what all basic things are required we'll be doing like that so create the main object so all the details all the important details i have already mentioned here so the main object should be able to read the inputs from the program parameters so once you build the jar from the arguments that you passed for that jar it should be able to read what arguments that also i have mentioned 
it should be able to do this and parse below arguments below program arguments to be used in the application so you have to provide the jar name could be anything but the first argument it will uh, consider as a conf file so this is a test based approach so once you open any particular task you don't have to worry about what is this conf what is this environment what is this you don't have to worry just whatever is mentioned you develop that so from here you can see that i have to create a main class that should parse some arguments which are given in this format to the application so whatever is at index 1 there will be some argument i have to read it somewhere that's it second which will be environment for the namesake i have given but there would be something at the first index then second index and third index so this kind of main object you have to create and again the checklist you have to create the main main object then you have to write a function which can parse the given arguments and then you have to write the test cases okay don't worry if you are not sure of how to write the test cases but this is actually uh, how any particular description can be when it comes to the actual project because uh, in today's scenario all are going with the test based approach so any particular piece of code that you develop you just develop only that and you write the test cases for whatever you have written and your work is done now wherever it is used they will be having the updates for whatever they are going to use that means the main object so you'll come to know all that gradually once we work uh, together on this so this is pretty basic thing and uh, i think good for you to start from one end so you can go through this so i'll uncheck now coming to create a config file so this is for everyone uh, there should be a config file a dot con file under main and test resources that means basically main resources here you can create a new file and the resources you can create a new file something dot conf now we'll come to that what name you will give because there are many uh, things that you should be uh, thinking on your own that will be coming as a part of review so that many people can understand that uh, maybe naming convention also some specific things are to be taken care but it's fine right now you can uh, go with your call now the config file under main and test resources the config should contain first the environment wise tag so it's up to you how you want to use you want to create a conf file you want to create a json file but it should be having environment wise tags like for production test and development or many other environments so the idea is to use whenever an application is developed it will not be developed for different environments right so we will be handling that inside our config files so there should be different tags regarding to the environment now more details each tag should maintain spark configurations like application name like whatever we used to pass while creating a spark session application name master executor etc maybe tomorrow multiple application maybe after some time we want to add some more configurations that are to be passed to spark we can just update here we don't need to change our code so this is the basic config that you should maintain so i'm giving you a background idea whatever the tasks i have created once you start developing and maybe you start developing parallelly someone else will also start developing they will be keep pushing their code you can take the reference from that as well so it, it will be a sort of teamwork okay so i hope that is clear now create a spark session initializer and guys the names of all these classes you can take your call whatever you want to keep just do it inside your feature branch because that is also a very strong point that comes in code reviews that what name you have kept so we'll be discussing once we go for reviews now create a spark session initializer all details are here create a spark session initializer object which should now read carefully all the instructions you should read very carefully read the required spark configs from the dot con file where is the dot con file that was passed in the main object if you remember here we have passed a dot con file so whatever name we pass here from that dot con file we can maintain multiple con file as well but do it as it is written so whatever is passed here 
you read that and you return a Spark session with all configuration set that will be used throughout the application. I hope that is clear. Second, it should be picked from the config file tag provided as env argument of the program arguments. Okay. So first of all, this will be using all these arguments. From this file, it should pick all the Spark config that are mentioned inside this env tag. So as I told you, while creating the config, it should be environment wise tags like suppose in the main object I provide the env as prod then it should take the config file this config file and inside this it should pick all the application master executor instances respective to which environment the prod I hope that is clear guys this, this is pretty much the actual implementation that I am telling you so this might also be uh, helpful if you are giving big data interviews and when it comes to answering very uh, the down to floor questions that on the floor what you did okay then comes create the file system utility so the description the file system utility should take the arguments first base file system like what file system we are going to uh, use either it is a local file system hdfs s3 or anything then the path these two arguments it should take then one thing is already given to you that the path will have date partitions like the path uh, that is being passed here on the file system it will have path slash year month date this is given to you now it should take these arguments and return what the latest date path from the given file system and path so let's say uh, there was a path hdfs something and path to file actually this will be having dates like year month and date so multiple paths will be there so 15 16 this is given to you okay what it has to return the latest date path so if to this function file system utility if i pass the base file system and path that means if i pass here hdfs and the second argument i pass as path to file let's suppose this i pass so it should return me this I hope you get it this is the basic functionality now again here the checklist tasks create the utility connect to the file system obviously if I pass HDFS and uh, then path to file then it has to read till here then it will come to know that it has for 20 20 12 14 15 and 16 so it has to connect and check here and then create a function to sort out the latest date so from here you have to sort out the latest date and then return the path so all this checklist is also there write the test cases using scala sorry scala test okay i hope this is clear test cases i have made already one video is there uh, how to use scala test so i hope that is pretty much clear still uh, we'll be discussing this uh, but this is actually uh, the test based approach that is used uh, very commonly these days so uh, we'll also we will also include the test cases writing so i hope this is clear now then you have to create a reader object you can go through all these details as i have already explained for others and writer object what all things it should take what are, what all things it should do everything is mentioned here so this was all that uh, I was discussing, just waiting for all the interested members to share with me their Trello ID and the GitHub details so that I can give you the access for this board and this Git repo. And we'll also be having such sessions or some live sessions as well. Once you guys start pushing the codes so that we can also interact with each other and discuss uh, whatever code you have written or in case you are stuck somewhere 
once you get the access to this board guys uh, whatever tasks you are picking up i would suggest you you can write the comment here that you have picked this task and whatever updates you have and once this is collectively done i'll keep moving the cards here and there and gradually uh, you can start from the top i'll uh, keep adding the other tasks as well so whenever you get time you can see go through the description what all things are new and you can start building them so that was all for this video thank you guys hoping for working with you guys as a team i'm sure that will be a good learning for everyone thank you guys see you later mm -hmm.